All right, so I've went over all the basics on how to solve a four x four blindfold using U2 R2 and OP method. And now I'm going to just discuss some uh, other things you can do to be, get a little faster once you get a lot more comfortable with the method. Now um, it's a beautiful day outside, so I'm essentially doing this tutorial next to a playground. So that's what you're hearing. I'm dealing, you're gonna have to deal, I'm sorry. I just wanted to get this done today. So, um, I'm just going to go through all the parts that we went over and uh, mention different things that you can do in those parts to uh, be a little faster. So um, first of all, memorizing centers. Uh, essentially, I told you that you may have to break it to a new cycle sometimes, and yes, that may, have, that may be a requirement, but not always. So the centers are different because there are four of each, and they are not different at all. Like, the wings are different. Like I said, they were, uh, like, one-sided wings, so they are very different. But centers, they're literally the same exact piece, four of them, on each side. Except not in this case, because it's not soft. Um, so, centers are different in that you can actually avoid having to break it to a new cycle. And here's why. Uh, so you have a red, and you just go down the line. So if you go in this order, then this is the next piece you're going to shoot to, white. Now, if you if you shoot to that piece, so I'm going to do that really quick. It's, it's an L prime case. It's upper right, but that's beyond. So now you have a complete white face, and you're going to have to break to your cycle, which means you're going to have to shoot here and then here. Those are the only pieces that are uh, messed up in this case. But you can also uh, think, okay, this is a red piece. In theory, you can you can also shoot here. So instead of shooting here, then here, then here, then here, you can shoot here, then here, then here. So what you're essentially doing is um, avoiding breaking into a new cycle, and as a result, you are um, you are eliminating a target. So you have to do one less target. So uh, that's that's really the only trick I have for memorizing centers. Uh, that is something that you will just get comfortable with as time goes by. Mainly, that's the only thing that's not very basic that I can tell you about that that I know of. So then we go into executing centers. Uh, so we have decided that we're going to shoot to this piece, which is J, this piece, which is N, and then this piece, which is H. I'm sorry, I, so J and I. Um, notice that these two are both lower left centers. So for lower left center, you're gonna have to do an L prime. I mean, a small L, small L. Uh, so you're gonna shoot to this one first, and bring it up, U2, bring it back. And then you have another lower left center, which is way back there, so you're going to do the slice again. Small d2, bring a slice up, u2, undo setup moves. Now, instead of doing all those moves, what you can also do is you can shoot to this piece first, like you have to, and then realize that you have to shoot to this piece first. It was brought over here. So you just bring the slice down and then bring that over here. So, and then do U2 and then undo the setup move as if you're shooting to that piece. Uh, I hope you understood that. Um, if you went, if you looked at Noah's tutorial, um, in his tips and tricks section, he like alludes to uh, like an M2 shooting to this piece and then shooting to this piece. So you shoot there. And then it's right here now, so you would shoot to that piece, as you can see what I just did there. So that's sort of a, I guess, pseudo commutator. It's a three cycle of some sorts. And that's that's essentially what we're doing here. So uh, yeah, then you shoot to I. Parity to you too. Uh, so yeah. Um. Another thing that you can do for centers, um, I have not ever done this in a speed solve, but I have thought about it. Um, again, if you watch Noah's tutorial, he went over advanced M2, 
which is if you have a bad case like this one or this one, then you can do a U move, move them out of the way, and then do two cycles. So essentially, uh, I'll give you an example. So you want to shoot to this piece and then this piece. What you can do is you can move it out of the way so that you don't have to do that long algorithm for this part and then just do it as if you are shooting here. Now, there is an interchange and by doing that you move you messed up the interchange. So if you do another interchange by shooting down here and then undo your U so with the U prime, then that will uh, fix all your interchanges. And yeah, so I suppose there is such things advanced U2, um, except you can't, except yeah, never mind. There is such things advanced U2, I suppose, where if you have an algorithm case like up here or down here and you have something over here, then you can like move it out of the way and then do two interchanges and shoot to both pieces. I have not done that in practice, um, but it is something to definitely think about. So that's all I'm gonna get into with centers. Um, wings. Now, I'm just gonna do a random scramble so I can give you an example here. There is something I can say about wing memorization. There's birds too, that's wonderful. Um, Okay, so let's say, let's say that's blue, that's orange, just for example's sake. So this is top, this is front. So what, what we went over is uh, just kind of following the piece then putting it into its correct spot. So the red, so the red, yellow, red, yellow would go like this and then like this, tracing. Now. And then we use this piece as a reference point to go to the next one. So this is green, orange, so it's going to go right here. So you imagine a D prime and an F. Now, you can use other pieces as reference points as well. So if you, let's say, you get to here. Uh, yeah, that's a valid piece. And this is going to be down here somewhere. So instead of imagining, like, going down here and then doing a D2 to excuse me, bring it over there. You can also recognize that this buffer piece can also be used as a reference point. So you can take this, you think, okay, yellow, red, and you can go from the buffer piece and then just swing over here. Uh, that might be easier for you. Uh, another, another helpful reference point is this helper piece. So you know this is a valid position. So you have valid positions. There's the buffer and helper, which are valid positions. Like, if this is a valid position, this is not, but this is. And you can, and as you go, and as you get better at memorizing wings, you can um, gain more and more reference points until all your pieces are reference points. Um, I don't think, even I don't have all my pieces reference points, but I have a few reference points like this one and this one, the buffer and helper. Um, this one and this one because they just need to be flipped. I went over the flip in part four, I believe it was. And I've gotten a lot better with that. So, uh, yeah, basically you're going to gain reference points and instead of doing long convoluted moves, you might have to just uh, imagine going from buffer or going from helper. That might make things a lot easier for you. So, um, the other thing is you're going to learn you're going to ac accumulate new ways of imagining moves. So you know that you can do like a U prime or a U or, or even inner slices and I just taught you the flip trick. Um, there are other moves like if like for example if you're going from if you're going from like I'm just going to do it on a solved cube. If you're going from like here to here and you're right here then you can simply go over to this side on the same inner like this and you can do a flip. So from here to here is a valid move that you can imagine. It's not really a move that you could do, but um, you can think about it and it's a good way to get to your next piece quickly. Um, so alternatively you can go from here 
to the buffer, or from here to here, or from here to here. I, I know those are not valid uh, pieces, but just showing you legal moves that you can do just to quickly get to your des next destination. Um, also, if you have this and you want to go all the way to, you can go all the way to the other side and also flip. So you can do like inner flips and outer flips. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I'll explain it the best I can. Um, you can easily like prove this by going from here to here. You can do this kind of move. So, um, yes, you will accumulate those types of moves. Oh, and another helpful one is uh, going from here to here. So, you're kind of uh, doing a flip like this. I noticed that works because you can just do uh, F2 and then inner turn to move it over there. So this is a very useful one. Um, so yeah, that's really it for wing memorization. As for wing execution, um, just like U2 and M2, there, I suppose there is such thing as advanced R2, where you move these bad pieces, like in these middle, in this middle slice, out of the way, so you have an easier case. But it's, I imagine it would be harder to um, know, like if, like okay, if you want to go here, I know it's like up here, but how do you know if you if you can't shoot down here? Uh, I, I mean, I guess that's not going to be that hard, but you know, I've never done it in practice. It's something to think about, though, and uh, and it's not, and unlike centers, you cannot just avoid regular to recycle, though, so. I suppose that's really um, everything I can think of for uh, tips and tricks. And that concludes the tutorial. So um, I, I really hope this helped. Um, and if I could get reception of this and there is uh, requesting, then I may make tutorials for um, the 5x5 blindfolded and maybe even very large cubes blindfolded, like 6x6 six six plus, um, using the U2 method. Um, I'm not very good with uh, very big cubes blindfolded. I do not have much experience. I have done one attempt for the 6x6 six six blindfolded. It was a success. I don't know how <laughs> it took me only one try. But um, I have a method for it, so um, if that is requested, then uh, yeah. I could make a tutorial for that. Um, I will tell you that from 4x4 to other other bigger cubes blindfolded is not as big of a jump as from here to here blindfolded is. Um, this is like a lot more to know, but once you have a, a good grasp of 4x4, getting to 5x5 is not that bad, I promise you. So um, yeah, I really hope that helped and thanks a lot for watching.